I am preaching a message that I have titled, God is able. God is able. And I feel led to preach this message to bring a word of encouragement to each one of us that God is able. The last two years have been dramatic in many respects in our world. Uh, we had the COVID two years ago. Just about this time, last two years, we had the lockdown. And that is when we couldn't come to church. Businesses were shut down. Everything was shut down. It looked like we were living in a movie world. Our world, which we thought was all together, all of a sudden felt very sick. And at the beginning of the pandemic, as you remember, there was so much uncertainty. There was no vaccine. There was no treatment. And there was no hope. And people were getting infected all over, especially in many parts of the world. By this time, two years ago, Italy was the epicenter of the pandemic. And they couldn't handle what was happening. People were dying. And it grew. Ghana shut down. We were all indoors. I remember those days uh, when I had to come and preach my first message with our other congregation in our old church and just with a camera and started preaching with other congregation and encouraging people and uh, these two years have been periods of uncertainty it's affected us in many many ways it's affected m many of you even in your worship because some people are still uh, bound by COVID at home it affected businesses, economies were shut down, and it didn't just happen two years ago, it continued throughout the year of 2020 and went through the year 2021. Much of last year was full of uncertainty. It's only in this year that we are beginning to see some glimmer of hope uh, along the horizon that things are getting better. And, uh, you know, I follow Ghana's numbers very, very closely. I am uh, a very ardent student of COVID. You can be sure. I know every country and what is happening there. I know what is happening and I do it religiously, follow it every day just to be sure of what is happening. And thank God our numbers in Ghana have gone very low and uh, we are now active case of about 69. Uh, that is a statistical zero in Ghana. Statistical zero. Uh, and and it's, it's almost most regions are zero. Accra is just about 21 active cases in Ghana. So God has been good to us. But in the process, so much has been dislocated. And just when we thought uh, we were swinging out of COVID and we were going to uh, rebuild our world, then we had the prospect of a war that nobody can tell the end of. And we don't know whether the world is headed to a third world war or, or whatever it is. Because sometimes things may start very innocently and then become something totally different. I remember when the uh, pandemic started in China, we thought it was for the Chinese until it hit everybody. So we can't predict. And in moments of uncertainty, we all feel uncertain. We feel unsure. We feel we probably can't make it. We are not sure how things are going to happen. But I just came to assure you this morning that God is able. And whilst things are changing, whilst life is uncertain, keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your faith in the Lord. Keep yourself grounded in the word of the Lord because God is is able and i'm going to walk you through four scriptures in the bible two in the old testament and two in the new testament that affirm what we are talking about that god is able my first text 
is in Romans chapter 14, verse 4. Romans chapter 14, verse 4. The apostle Paul is writing. And he says, Who are you to judge another's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand. For God is able to make him stand. I want you to note that God is able to make him stand. And you can personalize it and say, God is able to make me stand. The background to what Paul is writing here has to do with an argument that was going on in the early church. Uh, and the, the argument was about food. Because in the Roman world, uh, meat was always offered to the gods of Rome before they were sold in the market. And Christians who bought meat on the market, people would say, uh, were being contaminated because <clears throat> the, the, the meat had, first of all, been offered to idols. And it was a very big uh, debate and some Christians were condemning each other for doing that. So Paul is addressing that. And Paul basically is saying, whether the food is offered to idols or not, a cow is a cow. God created it, and when you eat it in faith, you will not be contaminated and you will not be harmed. And so he says that in the context of that, God is able to make us stand. That means in the midst of a world of uncertainty, of spiritual attacks, of spiritual contamination, God is able to make us stand. And that is the main argument of Paul as he writes to the Romans. I like the word able that is used in the text. The word able means to have power. To have power. It means God has the power to make me stand. The word able also means to be willing to do. To be willing to do. That means God is willing to make me stand. Not only is he able, but he is willing. And the word able means to make possible. It means that God makes it possible for me to stand. Today we may not be de debating about meat offered to idols. We are debating about whether after COVID we will stand or fall. Whether in the midst of challenges we will stand and fall. I came to announce to somebody and to your wife and to your children and to your mother and to your father that God is able to make you stand. You will stand. You will stand. You will not fall. You will not be a victim. You will not be a statistic of COVID. God is able to make me stand. When temptations come against me, I will stand because God is able to make me stand. When people come against me spiritually and there are spiritual attacks against me, I will stand because God is able to make me stand. When everything around me is collapsing, businesses are collapsing, people's are, people are collapsing, I will not collapse because God is able to make me stand. When I go through difficult seasons, God is able to make me stand. Though I may not have money right now and I cannot fill my fuel tank of my car, God is able to make me stand. Don't give in and fall. Don't give in and collapse because God is able to make me stand. It's been a tough season. It's been a dark night. It's been a long dark night. But God is able to make me stand. Somebody put your hand upon your chest and say, God is able to make me stand. And that's the truth. The second text that we want to consider speaking to us about what God is able to do is in Daniel chapter 
3 verse 17 Daniel that chapter 3 verse 17 and it reads if that is the case our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand oh Mr. King Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were the ones who uttered these words. They were caught in a difficult political and spiritual dilemma with King Nebuchadnezzar. They have refused to bow to the king's image. Everybody is bowing, but they were the only ones standing. They chose to stand. And when you choose to stand, there are consequences. There will be targeting. There will be attacks. Because when everybody is going down and re you refuse to go down and stand, people will notice you, people will point at you, and people will start attacking you. And that's what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three Hebrew boys stood up when everybody bowed to the image of King Nebuchadnezzar. The king was so angry that he decided that they had to suffer the greatest of punishment. Not only to be thrown into fire, but to be thrown into fire that has been heated seven times. So hot that the people heating the fire itself were destroyed by the fire. And the king gave them the option last minute to change their minds. And that is what, when they said this word, Mr. King, Mr. Nebuchadnezzar, thank you for your offer. But the God we serve is able to deliver us. Not only is God able to make us stand, he is also able to deliver us. When we are threatened, God is able to deliver us. When the fire is burning so hot, God is able to deliver us. When we are attacked because we stood for the Lord, God is able to deliver us. If there are conspiracies against you, God is able to deliver you. If you are the focus of gossips, God is able to deliver you. Don't ever look at what comes against you and say, well, I don't think I will go through it. You will go through it. And not only will you go through it, you will come out of it. Because God is able to to deliver us God is able to make us stand and when we get attacked because we are standing God is able to deliver us I don't know what the world is coming to I have stopped predicting the world since two years ago because anything can happen in our world where we are now Anything can happen. But my heart is fixed on the Lord. That he is able to make me stand. And he will deliver me. And your heart must be fixed on the Lord. Not on CNN. Not on reading the news. Not on determining who is bombing who. And who is not bombing whom. Whether there is going to be a third world war. Or there will be peace. I don't know about it. But one thing I know for sure. God will make me stand and God will deliver because he is able. There is nothing coming against you or nothing that has come against you that God cannot deliver you out of. For, for the three Hebrew boys, it was against a political force. King Nebuchadnezzar when the king is against you, where do you turn to? To God. Because the king has a boss. The Bible says the heart of a king is in the hands of the Lord. Don't ever give so much power to any human being or human institution. It can be government. It can be corporate leader. It can even be a spiritual leader. Don't ever make any human being God. Don't ever. 
Because no human being is God, no system is God, no institution is God. And when they come against you because you stood up and they burn the fire seven times, fear not because God is able to deliver you. You may see the fire, you may feel the heat, you may smell the smoke, but it will not touch you, it will not destroy you. God will deliver you. God is able to deliver. So God is able to make a stand. God is able to deliver us. Number three. Third scripture is also in the Old Testament. Second Chronicles chapter 25 verse 9. Then Amaziah I hope none of you is called that name. Then Amaziah said to the man of God, <clears throat> But what shall we do about the hundred talents which I have given to the troops of Israel? And the man of God answered, The Lord is able to give you much more than this. God is able to give you much more than this. So what is the story here? Amaziah is the king of Judah. Now this is at the time when we had the divided kingdom. Those of you who know your Bible a bit. Israel is divided into two. The northern kingdom is called Israel. And the southern kingdom is called Judah. The northern kingdom uh, is full of idolatry. Israel proper is full of idolatry. Their kings are full of idolatry. The southern kingdom, Judah, sometimes have good kings and sometimes bad kings. So they go in and out. They are slightly better than Israel. So this guy called Amaziah became king of Judah, the southern kingdom. And at the time he became king, the Moabites, the Edomites came against him. And they wanted to fight him. The army was too big. Because Judah was always a smaller kingdom. And Israel was a bigger kingdom. So. Amaziah king of Judah. Built an army. But he didn't think his army was big enough. To fight Edom. So. He did what naturally anybody would do. He went to his brothers up north. The Israelites and said. Hey. Hey. These guys want to fight me. Give me troops. So the Israelites gave him troops. About 100,000 soldiers. And he paid. A hundred talents of silver. For that. Good negotiation. Then just as he has finished. Paying for the troops from Israel. God sent a prophet. A man of God. To go and tell Amaziah. I don't want Israel to add to your troops. They are bad people. The man is saying, where were you when I was making the negotiation? <laughs> I've paid for the thing already. He says, no, you're not going to include Israel in this negotiation. Just go as you are, Judah. And so King Amaziah asked the logical question. So what about the money I have paid? What about the investment I have made? And the man of God said to Amaziah, God is able to do much more than this. God is able to do much more than this. Sometimes you lose. Sometimes an investment goes bad. Sometimes something you put your hand to doesn't work out and if we are not careful we stay in the place of disappointment for the rest of our lives and we never move on with our lives we never know how to take the next step because every conversation of yours is about the hundred talents of silver I paid and didn't get any benefit from the money I lost the relationship I lost the friend who left me but God says I am able to do much more than this. God is able to do much more 
than this. You have to learn to go beyond what you have lost. Move beyond what went bad. Move beyond lost money. Move beyond lost friendships. Move beyond lost opportunities. They have cheated you out of what is yours. But God is able to do much more than this. And if you believe God is able to do much more than this, stop complaining. Stop sitting in the same place. Oh, and what this man did to me. And oh, what this woman did to me. And oh, I suffered with this man. And then oh, he left me for somebody else. And oh, I suffered with that woman. And oh, she abandoned me. God can do much more than this. God is able. I said God is able. There are people sitting here. It's time to move on. It's time to move on. There are some conversations you have to cancel out of your conversation. You must never bring up some topics again. Because God is able to do much more than this. And the more you stay there, the more you hinder the flow of God's power. God is able to do much more than this. This is what you lost, but God will do much more than that. This is what went wrong, but God is able to do much more than that. Some of you have been left by people you loved. And your whole life is frozen. And you wake up and cry and cry and cry and cry and cry. God is able to do much more than this. I'm sure God is looking at the man who left you. And God looks at that man and call him this with a sense of humor because God looks at the person that you are crying over and say are you crazy this you are crying over this this thing that's why you can't get out from your home that's why you can't leave your bed that's why you are hugging your pillow this but today God says to you, he is able to do much more than this. Maybe you got fired from your job and you've been crying. Where am I going? God says to tell you, he can do much more than this. There is nothing in your life that is higher than God's power. So you couldn't have experienced something and say, as for this, I don't think it will be better. It will be better. Because God is able to do much more than this. So for whatever you're going through this season, God is able to make you stand. For whatever you are going through this season, God is able to deliver you. And for whatever you're going through, God is able to do much more than this. Now, if God can do all of that, what should we do? Final scripture. Matthew chapter 9. Everything ends with Jesus. Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 to 29. Matthew chapter 9, 27 to 29. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? And they said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be done to you. So I'm going to ask you this question Jesus asked. Do you believe God is able to do this? Do you believe God is able to make you stand? Do you believe God is able to deliver you? Do you believe God is able to do much more than this? Don't just say yes with your mouth. Say it with your heart. Say it with your actions. 
If you believe God is able to do much more than this, you're not going to cry about that thing again. And you're not going to be telling people about your story. Have you heard my story? Hmm. Hey, the world is dark. Oh, have you heard mine? You will stop that. I said you will stop that. I said you will stop that. Certain conversations must stop in your life. Certain complaints must stop in your life. It's gone. It's gone. God can do much more than that. If you believe that, do you believe God can make you stand? Do you believe God is able to make to deliver you? Do you believe God is able to do much more than this? Then Jesus says, according to your faith, be it done unto you. And so today I declare, according to your faith, be it done unto you. If you believe God is able to make you stand, you will stand. If you believe God is able to deliver you, you will be delivered. If you believe God is able to do much more than this, he will do much more than this. According to your faith, be it done unto you. As you have believed, so is it. As you have believed, so it is. As you have believed, so it is. As you have believed, so it is. People are standing. People are being delivered. God is able to do much more and he's doing much more for you. I release everything you have believed according to your faith. According to your faith. I release it into your life. I release it into your life. I release it into your life. Divine ability. Divine ability at work in your life. Divine ability at work in your life. Divine supply at work in your life. Divine deliverance at work in your life. Divine provision at work in your life. And from this day, the ability of God is released into your life. And walk in that ability. Walk in that victory. Walk in that freedom. In Jesus name. If you believe it, say I receive it. Oh, say one more time. Say I receive it. Say it another time with a big I receive it. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering somebody. Amen.